I grade their journals. We show the journals to the mentors at the end, but we don't make the journals do any grading. And I have the mentors call me if there are any problems or email me, but I don't bug the mentors. And then at the end, we give the mentors a very easy assessment. So just check, check these things and write comments if you choose. So that's real easy. Uh, we choose students wisely. The most important things, they have to be competent, but they don't have to be straight A students. And they have to be responsible. They have to get to their site on time, and they have to uh, be courteous and respectful of the mentors. So that's really important. Uh, we have to monitor the students' progress, ensure, ensure mutual benefit. How do you do this? I write letters in support of grants. A lot of science grants require community outreach. I've written letters for postdocs for teaching positions. I've written letters of recommendations for mentors for their tenure and promotion. So it becomes mutually beneficial. And we also give a stipend for the science mentors. That's the only program we give a stipend in, but we give a $500 stipend to the mentors at the end because we know our students use a lot of supplies. So it's an expensive program in terms of both, you know, one teacher teaches about six, six to eight students at Gilmore, and also we pay the mentors. We invite mentor feedback, and of course we provide a letter after each internship. We provide a letter with student comments on that so they can put it in their records. So when we went to start this entrepreneurship program, internship, you can't just throw a student into a business and say, okay, we have these outcomes that you're supposed to achieve in the area of business and entrepreneurship, but you've not had any courses prior, so you don't even know what return on investments is. And I didn't know, by the way, what that was before I started this. Um, so we had to give some prerequisite knowledge. And in Catalyst, we don't put them in a chemistry lab if they haven't had previous chemistry experience. So we set up a two-week summer workshop. It's going to be fun. We're going to start a business. We had two people sign up. Mm -hmm. Back to the drawing board, because you have to generate interest. At Gilmore, we can't develop a new course. We didn't have any business courses in the curriculum. You can't develop a new course unless you have six students or more. So, to develop interest, we had these experiences. We started this program called the Entrepreneurship Exploration Community. We had speakers come in. We had people from Nottingham Spurt come in. We had Mitchell's Ice Cream come in. We did this for three years. We invited parents. We got parents and maybe two or three kids, except when Mitchell's Ice Cream came. Then we got a lot of kids. But uh, <laughs> the kids didn't come, and when I talked to them, they said, you know, we have homework, we have sports, we know we should come, we know it would be fun and interesting, but it's at the bottom of our list. So we said, okay, in order to get the internship, we had to have the prerequisite learning. In order to get that, we had to have student interest. Luckily, we had two students who came to these often and then went to the director of upper school and said, we need a course in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. which was like, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and those students were, were very persuasive with their peers, and they got enough peers, and we had 18 kids in the first section of entrepreneurship and management. So that's how we did it. So then, so then you know, sitting on the side saying, well, you know, these extra experiences at least excited these kids. We have so many extra experiences at Gilmore, so many city club trips and corporate club luncheons and summer workshops, and a lot of kids don't take advantage of it. It's kind of like, these are your vegetables, eat them. But, but they're not getting credit for it. And so that's how we got into the uh, Vector program. We said, we have to arrange something that helps kids organize their academics in a way they want to, but also gives them credit and a reason for doing these things. Clubs and organizations. A lot of kids sign up for clubs, they get in the picture, and they put it on the college resume, and they've done nothing with the club. Speakers, they don't necessarily come to the speakers' field trips, symposia, workshops, shadowing experiences, and even internships. Some of our kids choose electives, if you can believe, because of the time of day that it's held, or the teacher who's teaching it, or that it's an easy A, or that their friends are in the course. We want them to choose more judiciously, and so that's how the Vector program allows the kids to incorporate all of these things. And we're not adding more courses because our schedules are full, we're just saying, Select more carefully. And so, just to follow up with that last, uh, with leadership and civic learning a little bit more. Um, 
so again, it is it is a course that we want to, and, and we're constantly trying to develop rigor within that course, and it's a work in progress, especially for something that can be very um, high in the sky when you talk about civic engagement. You know, where, where you can crunch numbers in in uh, in entrepreneurship, and you can crunch numbers and, and do experiments and record data and science. Civic engagement has been a little bit more difficult and is a work in progress, but we have had great success placing our students in leadership and civic learning. Um, we actually crossed over a little bit. We have somebody who's following around a cardiovascular surgeon at Hillcrest. Um, somebody, one of our students who enjoyed rebuilding Cleveland so much got to work with the experiential learning center at Cleveland State. They helped develop a uh, summer program based upon their own experiences. They shared what we were doing in our course and, and helped develop that, that, that program with the, with the folks down at, at Cleveland State. St. Luke's Foundation, we have somebody who is working with Nelson Beckford, who is doing demographic study on the Shaker Square, um, Shaker Square, Buckeye, and Woodland neighborhoods. And, and this is a young man who grew up in Cleveland Heights, which is just you know three miles away. He had never really been to St. Luke's, and now he's learning about the, the shifts that are happening in the with the population. That in those in those struggling areas and how they're trying to establish some some foundation and, and leverage so that they can start rebuilding that, that that neighborhood. We have somebody who's working with a startup who's interested in writing and uh, Literary Cleveland is a new startup. Uh, Lee Chilpo, who used to work, uh, who, who's a contributor to um, Cranes and used to work at Freshwater Cleveland. He it, she is helping them establish a media presence. Uh, social media presence and also helping with their programming as well and folks working with with real estate development startups and small businesses so we have folks in all different types in, in leadership and civic learning and so when we bring this all back together we, we want to get back to that mission driven portion and this is kind of what I'll wrap up with because I know we're right about that time and we're hungry and we want to leave a chance for questions you might be able to study science you might be able to study entrepreneurship um, civic engagement, but as a scientist, are you going to be doing the doing the things that we hope that you would do once you're gone? You know, have we instilled in you that social responsibility? If you're if you're making robots, what are your robots going to do? If you're creating software, what kind of software are you creating? What's the ultimate outcome? If you become a politician, are you developing the confidence to see? Are you creating that just and humane society? And so that's where it comes back to the mission. Can you wrap up? Um, just part of our mission is confidence. And so we're trying to get at those upper levels of bloom where students can think critically about what they're doing. We also want to promote independent learning, but personalization is really important to us. One of our uh, taglines is students finding their voice. And so through the Vector program, they can find their voice. And an example is one of the students was uh, talking with me the other day. She's interested in the science and medicine one, but she's also interested in music therapy. And it just so happens that a friend of mine uh, is doing music therapy at the Cleveland Clinic and just published a paper on it. So I said, you know, you may be able to do research in, in that field. Um, so it's, it's totally mission driven, and it just helps kids to organize their own path with, in a way that is cohesive. We're happy to take any questions you have. On the um, portfolio that you showed us, it, it said I'm applying for a vector in this area. Can you talk about the what the application process is? So this is a, a recent change, knowing that, so we are in year two. Pilot year, we took 10 students only. We wanted to be able to manage it, and we wanted to be able to make sure that we established a process before we opened the floodgates and, and made it available to everyone. So we actually, uh, we went 10 students, two per, two per uh, strand, and uh, they were handpicked. So they were handpicked. Then we, uh, we moved into the idea that we were going to have an application process, and this was where we had a, a philosophical problem, because we wanted to attract not only students who are self-driven, but those students who need a little bit of help. And our application process looked a whole lot like an honors program. And this is not an honors program. And so when we were in the midst of uh, 
as a committee deciding who was going to be in this next uh, iteration or this next cohort coming through, we realized that we were unknowingly creating another honors track. And so we decided uh, instead of having 10, we now have 31. And their job is to accumulate, uh, according to our point value system, student-initiated experience. They are demonstrating that through each each year they can um, they can perform enough out of out of class experiences that demonstrate that they are, are showing that true passion and that, that ambition. So basically, we took everybody who applied and we said you're in now, but not permanently. You have to perform. And the thing about the student initiated experiences is we've developed a rubric and there are three criteria. One is engagement, one is depth. depth. What was the other one? Leadership. Leadership, yeah. And so the students decide how many points they think they should earn. And they have to meet with their mentor and they have to justify why they think they should earn that many points. So for instance, in the um, entrepreneurship and commerce one, some of my kids are writing a business plan and participating in the business plan competition. They said, well, how many points do you think that's worth? And I said, you tell me. They go to a city club. How many points do you think? Were you being a leader when you went to the city club? Or were you engaged? And were you thinking critically? I mean, they have to figure that out. And is the points a, a Gilmore system, or is it a vector? It's a vector system. Vector system. So the first year is what, six? Six. Six points, and then what was it, 12 and 18, I think it is? 12, 18. So each year they have to earn more. And just, just a few uh, numbers. I know that, that Deanne had a number, uh, a number of numbers about Catalyst and Adventure. We found that um, we actually had a split gender in the in the pilot group, and now that it's been open, uh, I, I did a few numbers of my own. 23 young ladies and eight gentlemen. So the, the ladies right now are are really showing great ambition and drive. I find that interesting. We'll try and look at trends and we'll continue to evaluate. Uh, we see that a lot in terms of high school taking initiative. The, the women are the ones who put in to be leaders of clubs and you know sign up for things. They, they're more on task, it seems. And that was one of the problems with the way we took applications is that you had to meet a deadline, you had to have an essay done, and you had to have a portfolio started to apply. Well, that takes out a lot of kids who just aren't there yet, not paying attention or not motivated. So we have to rethink. We're going to do a lot more mentoring of the kids before they apply in the future. So we're learning. You know, That's why we did a pilot program. Each year, we're going to be modifying things a little bit. So I see through the portfolio that they're sharing the, their experiences with the with their mentors and faculty. How about with other students? Are they, you know, imparting that knowledge or sharing the experience, talking about the program to the other kids in the community? I think that, that they have an opportunity to do that. Uh, one way that we tried to help uh, spread the word, uh, a, a number of the students were, were kind of unsure just with any, any pilot program. We actually established a, a, a vector advisory, so everybody has, uh, um, I run our vector advisory to try and make it cohesive and they started to organically spread the word about what was going on and they were talking about hey all these opportunities that we talk about um, on, a, on a weekly basis when we meet they started talking to their other friends and they you know the, the girls on the track team and cross country team were telling their underclassmen hey you know we're, it, it really has has grown organically and where where an honors program might have a stigma if, if you're not really an honors student this one says, hey, we get to do some really cool things. And, and I think the word, word is spread because you know when, when you have 31 students that, that are showing interest. Um, it's got about, about 100 in the class. Um, how do you uh, plan on treating the, the program uh, on your transcripts for when the students are, are applying to college? So um, it, it will be what we're envisioning right now. We don't have any who have graduated the current the kids are juniors, but we're envisioning an attachment to this transcript explaining the program and then they can submit their portfolio if they wanted to or, or a link to their portfolio or portfolio on DVD. 
Um, but that's what we do with the Catalyst program. We've been doing for years. Is there's there's a little blurb that the, the counselors have, and to explain what the program is. And a lot of times the students write their senior or their college essay on their experience in that program. Uh, Gilmore is against putting anything on the diploma. You know, the diploma has to be clean, and uh, so any other things they do um, are just on the side. And also to follow up with that, we when we were advertising the program, we did it in a way, again unknowingly, we said you'll graduate with distinction, and so that immediately yeah. started to attract the <laughs> honor <laughs> students. <laughs> and we said, well, we're saying one thing, where we're, we're this a welcoming program and find your passion, and then all of a sudden we're saying, you know, we're advertising graduate with distinction, and then you know, part of being the pilot, we're, we're learning from that, and and then we, we took a step back. And, and we found out it's not for everybody. You know, no. there's some kids who say, you know, my advisees came to me, I'm a sophomore advisory, or advisor, and they came to me and they said, you know, I don't know which one I want to go into, and I want to try different things. I said, well, maybe that's not the program for you. This program is for, for students who kind of know the area of their passion and want to really focus on that. So, you know, I had to explain to the kids, you're not bad if you don't do this. And you can still take all the courses that Vector students take. You're just not confined that your electives have to in some way relate to your interest in Vector. And scheduling also plays a part. We, you know, we've got a dynamite young lady who is taking every AP science that, that we have. You know, straight A student, but she also plays uh, prep hockey. And so she is off campus, and she's part. She's off campus just about every other weekend, and it's hard for her to accomplish some of those student-initiated experiences. Even if she does a little bit in the summer, she might not be able to, to have that time um, to dedicate towards something like that. And you know, again, it's okay if you're not in the program. It, it, it does have to, a lot of moving pieces and parts for people to be able to participate. Well, I bet the graduating with distinction might be appealing to that kid that feels like, I can't do honors, I can't get the straight A's, but I can be distinguished in this. And um, so that's just my comment. But my question mm -hmm. um, is, you talked about kids getting credit for it. Is that is the credit connected to how many points they, like do they have to get that 12 points to get the credit, or and how, how does that work? I guess is what I'm asking. Credit. It's not credits as in Carnegie credits. Like not graduation credits. Right. No. Okay. These but, are like vector points, I guess. Oh, okay, like, so points and credits. To stay are, in the vector program. They have to achieve the points that are required at the end of that year. So, so completing your whole path through the vector program doesn't give you graduation credits or, or the courses you have. The courses, for the courses do. So the internship is a course, the electives are courses, and the required course is a course. So those are all things on your transcript. But again, anybody can take those. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.